Hey, welcome back to the Run and Rev channel. And today is actually a day that we're going to get to plant some tomato plants in the ground. The signs are right. And we're going to get a little spot here tilled up. After we till it up, we're going to put about a dozen, I think 12 to 13 tomato plants in here. We may go more. I may bump it up to $10 worth of tomato plants. And that's going to put our total up to uh, 19 bucks. We can round it off to $20. And that's still going to leave us $10 for other things. That's counting potatoes, uh, cabbage, tomatoes, squash, zucchini, and okra. And I think that'll be plenty enough for this small spot right here. Now you can substitute some of those plants for different varieties of vegetables that you like. I know that there's a lot of YouTube gardening channels that anybody can tune in and get information. A lot of times some of that information is very helpful. Sometimes it's misleading because the person that's putting those videos out has the products and the facilities and things of that nature that you may not have. Uh, I don't have a large greenhouse. I don't have a hydroponic setup. I don't have an all organic setup. Uh, I'm not dependent upon uh, electricity or anything like that to control the humidity, heat, or the airflow in any of my stuff. This is just basic stuff that you, the homeowner, can do with a small spot of land and a small piece of equipment. Uh, and again, you can rent one of these garden tillers pretty cheap at a local rental company for eight hours to two days and you can have your whole spot done in a matter of a few hours if it's really good soil. But anyway, before you plant anything that's in a cup like this, the best thing to do is 24 hours before you plant it is take a cup of water and saturate it really good. Let the water pull up on it. It'll soak through. There are drain holes in the bottom of these cups. Okay? Then, let it set overnight. Prior to you planting the next day, soak them again. The reason I do this is because of this right here. It will keep the dirt moist to where the roots can hold it. And as you're planting it, you can tear the root base up a little bit and kind of fluff the roots out and it will uh, entice them to grow. However, if you don't soak it, a lot of times what you're going to get is as you pull the plant up, all your dirt is going to fall off and just the root system is going to be exposed. That's not a bad thing. However, I just like to keep it intact until I can set it in the ground. That way I don't cause any root damage. Okay. Now, next year when we plow this, this is just one of my pet peeves about some of the uh, processes that people do whenever they're planting these. <coughs> You're going to have some gardeners on YouTube or YouTube channels telling you, oh, go get peat moss, go get mushroom compost, go do this, go do that. All right, next spring when I come in here and I till this area up, this dirt will be very noticeable in my ground. It doesn't belong here, okay? And there's fillers in this stuff that will never go away. So next year when you're tilling up your garden and you see this dirt, that's a sign that you didn't need that to start with. It's really not helping your plants any. The natural soil nutrients should be enough for your plants to thrive. Okay? So remember, 24 hours ahead of time, soak them pretty good with water, saturate them, let them set overnight. Then a few hours before you plan on taking them out and of the holders and putting them in the ground, soak them and saturate them again. Okay? All right. We're going to fire this jewel up right here, I hope, and uh, get us a couple of lines tilled up, and we're going to plant these <laughs> wonderful smelling tomatoes, Rutgers, one of my favorites. So hang loose, and I'll be right back. I'm not going to torture you with watching me till, so sit tight. Let me get this done, and then we'll start planting. All right, we're down here next to the ground. And believe it or not, <laughs> due to some bad choices in my younger years and a few motorcycle wrecks and truck wrecks, I'm not really good at squatting down. 
Uh, so I'm going to put you as close to the ground as I can get, which is not very close. But anyhow, we've got our holes made for our plants. We're just simply going to kind of bust up the root ball just a little bit. Don't damage them. I see people rip these things apart, and you're not helping the plant none. And I forgot to dig a hole. But luckily, we got it. Nothing to it. Nothing at all. Now, in this row right here, we've got all Rutgers planted. <coughs> and what I've done, I don't really lay off my rolls like most people do with strings and twines and sticks. I just kind of eyeball mine. Now, my father's is laid off to the inch. Mine, not so much. So what I've done is in between two of my cabbage plants, which are right at four and a half foot apart, I can put two tomato plants. So I go about every two foot, put a tomato plant. Another two foot, put another one. But I just mark off right at four foot, three and a half to four foot in between my rolls. And I make a little notch on my hoe handle and I'll lay it beside one of my plants in the other row and just kind of eyeball it. And where that notch is is where my plant's gonna go. So, again, let me stress this. <coughs> and I don't know if you can see me or not, but I'm gonna get up here real close to the camera. This vine and this vine off this tomato plant, neither way is gonna help it or hurt it. You can cut them off if you want. I know a lot of people that do. I don't do it. Simply because my way of thinking is this. <laughs> if I cut that and I trim it, and it's a young plant, I'm already shocking it when I put it in the ground. You know, I'm transplanting it. That's a shock to a plant. And by cutting these off, I'm actually opening this plant up to a pest a cut worm, maybe it's a cold streak we get into for a couple days, a cold spell, and I've weakened this plant, not only by transplanting it, but by amputating some vines off. There's no sense in that. If you've ever pulled a tomato plant up after the end of season, whether it be in a garden or a container or things of that nature, you're going to see little white bumps all up the stalk. As far as that dirt was, that, that those little white bumps are going to be there. That's the emergent of a root system. It's not going to hurt anything. Put the dirt over them. I don't pack a lot of dirt around them real tight at first. <coughs> I'll come back here in a couple days and I'll step around them and pack the dirt in. But right now, the bad thing about living in the south is you have to watch for things in the dirt. Like... really sharp arrowheads. They will slice a fingertip open in a heartbeat. Uh, and I'm surprised this year, I have not found a cannonball out here. Normally I find a cannonball. This is where a Civil War battle actually took place. So before the year's through, we're probably gonna dig up a cannonball in this spot. I normally find two a year. So it's like living in a war zone out here. You don't never know what you're going to find, what you're going to do yet. But remember, uh, water your plants real good, saturate them 24 hours before you plant them. That's going to help them deal with the shock. You can pull some, look, I just pulled one off. You can pull some of them off if you want. It's not a big deal. I've done one for you. That way you won't be like, oh my God, he's not, you know, yeah. Okay. Now if this tomato plant dies, it's your fault. So... We have pruned one, one. Now I can't say I've never done it before. I just choose not to do it to my tomato plants. If you feel comfortable pruning your tomato plants, by all means do it, they're yours. You do what you want. I just find that it makes no difference. Not for my garden it doesn't. Maybe it might for yours, but for me, it does nothing for my tomato plants. It doesn't increase yield, it doesn't increase growth. Now it may for other people, 
but for me it doesn't work so why waste my time doing it and I'm gonna get off here and finish these rolls up get these things planted maybe put out a little bit of corn <coughs> One common mistake that people make when they first start putting out a garden is the depth of their seed. And I'm just going to walk a row off right quick. I'm going to pick a mark out. It's probably not going to be the straightest row in the world, but it'll be a row. Oh, not as good as a professional farmer out in Oklahoma, but it'll do. I got some corn seed. This small bag was $1.99. Uh, I'm going to show you this is a candy corn. It's a hybrid sweet corn. Let's move you down here where you can see just a little bit. Get you down there. Focus in. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> This is going to go into the $30 garden also, but I've got so much. This is going to be enough for a couple rows. So we're going to put some out here. And most people have a corn planter. I don't. I'm not as sophisticated as a bunch of people. I still do it by hand. So I'll overseed and I'll come in here and I will thin these out. And I'll just walk down the whole row doing this right here. Now if you want spacers out now, that's fine. But I put two kernels in there in case one didn't germinate or come up. You can overseed a little bit. Now, the big thing is this. I've seen people come through before and just kick dirt and covered up about four inches that's too much dirt just simply come back knock one side of it down a little bit on top of it not much doesn't take a lot of dirt let your corn grow down not up you're going to put about an inch and a half two inches of dirt on it All right, we're starting the corn planting, so just a little helpful tent, or tent, it's just a little helpful hint, I'm sorry, I'm about wore out. Uh, let me, let me focus on something right here and tell y'all something. Uh, I don't claim to know everything about gardening. I'm probably one of the most ignorant people when it comes to garden that there is. However, let me grab me a seat here. Oh, mercy. Whew. However, I grew up doing it. Uh, I'm sure that there's somebody out there that's read a lot more books than I have. I have never read a book on gardening. I don't think I've ever read a seed pack on gardening. Uh, gardening is a lot like beekeeping. You learn as you go. Uh, well, it's just about like life in general, I suppose. You know, you make mistakes. Next year, you overcorrect. You make more mistakes. Then you finally get it down pat to where you kind of know what you're doing. Uh, if all goes well with this channel and we can pick subscribers up and, and we get some input, everybody can learn something. Uh, don't watch my videos for the answers because I'm just showing you how I grew up doing it. 
uh, and I've had some pretty good success, and I've had some pretty bad failures. I mean, I'll be the first to admit. Uh, I'm just a, uh, I'm just an uneducated person that grew up in the country. Uh, I, you know, I work a normal job just like many of you do. I don't have uh, big fancy pieces of equipment out here. I don't have big greenhouses. I don't do hydroponics. Uh, hell, I, I, I really need hooked on phonics. Uh, you know, that's just how much brain power I have. I'm not trying to insinuate that uh, I know more than you, by no means. Please don't take it that way. Uh, but I learn by trial and error. And if I can try something and mess up and make corrections, and you can benefit from that, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I don't. But that's just me talking. All right, now let's go over. Water your plants the night before, the day of water. That helps keep the soil compacted. Uh, when you're planting something like corn, okra, green beans, don't don't drown them in dirt. You know, it does. You just got to cover them up with the insects and the birds and the sun won't burn them up or get them and eat them. And, you know, let your roots grow down. Don't make your plants grow up through four inches of packed dirt. It just it don't make no sense. But people do that all the time. They think, oh man, I'll plant deep and I'll get a better root system. It don't work that way. But uh, and and the reason I know that is because. Excuse me, I know I got a nasty habit. Tobacco chewing is a bad habit. I know that, and I'm trying to quit, but it's either that or kill somebody. But uh, <clears throat> I never could get corn to come up. I would have a spot here, a spot there, a spot here, a spot here. And back home, we got a corn planter. You know, you set the depth, you just push it right along, be bop, and it sets the seed. Well, I went up there with my dad one day helping him plant some corn and we were just going to throw a quick row out and he was watching me and by the time I got down to the end of the row he said what are you doing I said I'm planting corn what does it look like I'm doing he said you ain't planting corn you're digging a grave and it dawned on me that he was trying to tell me something about the depth of the seed now my father is the type of guy that when you mess up believe me he's going to let you know not in a bad way, but kind of in a joking way. But he gets his point across. And that's what I'm trying to do here is get a point across. <clears throat> if for some reason you're getting spots in your rows where stuff isn't coming up or uh, you've got a bald spot and you think, well, I just planted some bad seed and you've got 20 foot of good seed that came up, then you've got 10 foot that ain't, then chances are you probably varied on your depth that you put the seeds. If not, you may have got a bad batch of seeds. But my experience from my mistakes was I planted too deep. So hopefully you can learn something from that. Learn from my mistakes. But anyhow, I think I'm gonna call it a night. It's been a good day. Lord's blessed us with another good one. Now If you ain't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you want to leave me a comment, hey, feel free to do it. Just keep it family friendly because I will delete it if it's not. There's no sense. I think, you know, I, I've probably got an equal amount of female and male subscribers, and I'm pretty sure that uh, my subscribers do not want to read some vulgar comments. There's just no sense in that. I'm not trying to tell you how you live your life. I'm just telling you, don't do it on my channel. But anyhow, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit like, leave me a comment, leave me a question, leave me an answer. If you see me doing something that you think would work differently, hey, put it out there. I'm game. But anyhow, I'm out of here. I'm about P-dabbed out. So, until next time, y'all have a good week, really. I hope, you know, your blessings are fulfilled. Until next time, y'all have a great one. Lord, if I can get up from here. <laughs> Woo. 
Hell, I might just sleep right here. It ain't that hard of a stool. Beautiful day. Beautiful day.